Hi there, Nick from Centaur here, and today we're going to look at repairing the pitch or portamento strip on a Yamaha YC30 organ. These also appear in the YC45, and there is a same or similar one in the Yamaha CS60 and 80. So let's get started. Firstly, you might want to hear what it sounds like when it does not work correctly. So it's very glitchy, some spots are just completely dead, and that should be completely smooth uh, pitch sweep upward all the way up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take apart, or uh, remove the top panel by flipping it up and taking out the long screws set underneath and behind the keyboard that go up and hold this panel in place. So let's flip this up. I would normally recommend you do this on a stand and get under it because this uh, top panel is kind of top heavy and wants to flop open when you take the screws out. But for now, I'm just going to hold it in place and remove these two screws. All right, we'll set that aside. Set that aside. And flip this back down. All righty. Now we can lift from the sides here and access the internals. So this top metal panel right here is your pit strip. So what you have to do is start by making an orientation mark so it goes back in the same way. And then to take this out you have to desolder the five wires going to this bundle here. One, two, three, four, and there's two here so that's five and then you remove these screws and you take the unit out and then we'll walk over to the bench and we'll start taking apart the pit strip. Now if you don't have a soldering gun obviously you can use solder wick or one of the manual push button spring loaded solder suckers. Now for things like this I always like to take a quick photo because this is the orange is on the left and yellow is on the right or you could write that down and then the rest of them are pretty self-explanatory when it goes back in. It's good to open up that terminal so you can put the wire back in and bend it over for physical contact as well as the uh, solder. All right. Now we have those undone, and it's time to remove our eight screws. One thing we can do too is just mark here and here to remember where our little cable ties went. And our one last screw, we'll put these down so I can catch the unit as it comes out. And there it is. Always a good idea to have this unplugged too because you have your power supply kind of wide open right here. So always best to be safe. All right, now we'll go over to the bench and begin to take this apart. So what we have here is a piece of velvet covering a metal comb and under that is the elements that it touches to make the connection. And now how you do that is you lift the long sides, which are glued down, we'll get into how to re-glue those later, and then you have to remove on either side, there's a couple of small finishing sort of tack nails. So what we need to do is get in there and pry those out. What I like to use is either sort of a stiff blade like one of these soldering tools, or ideally too if you have an old set of flush cutters, not your good ones 
because you want to just get in there and get this nail out. These are usually pretty fragile and rusted, so sometimes you can only just do your best. There we go. See, the flush cutters get right under there. You could reuse these nails if they survive, but yes, there we go. All right. Get the other side. Perfect. Okay. So after you remove those, you can get under here. You might also need one of these blades or something to start your velvet being removed from the glue. Overall, not easy, but it is simple. Some of these are more loose than others. Now your organ or synth may have varying degrees of wear on this piece of velvet, and sometimes it's not the worst idea to just go out and find something to replace it with. Or at very least, if you want to put the old one back in, you do want to make sure, I mean, you have your orientation mark, but once you also take this velvet off, um, you might have a wear pattern that's going to get flipped around if you're not careful. Okay. This one's pretty stiff, but... Yeah. Usually once you get it started, you can peel it. There we go. Now here's the metal comb. I'll show this to you. Don't want to be too rough with this velvet. But you especially want to be extremely careful with this metal comb because it is very thin and very fragile and prone to getting bent out of shape. Okay, I'm just going to peel this. That should work fine. Nice. Okay. So there's your old piece of velvet. You can see it's kind of got sort of an oxidized green look on the inside. Outside of this one's pretty clean, but we'll clean that up later. So here's your extremely fragile and thin metal comb. Now the way this works is when you press on this, the teeth go down and touch the element on the other side. Might want to get in very lightly with some kind of thin blade. Be very careful. See, it's already looking like it wants to bend a little. So there's your element. You see this has sort of like a nice gold coated um, contact strip on the inside. So what we want to do is this will actually kind of flip over. Really what you want to do here is just clean these up with your favorite contact cleaner or um, some alcohol maybe. This, uh, this sort of carbon strip, you don't want to go on to it with any cleaner too much because you don't want to remove any sort of conductive coating. So what we'll do is just get a little bit of paper towel and some contact cleaner. These usually, I've seen these with a lot of sort of green spotting on it. And, you know, sometimes people don't realize that you can clean oxidation with deoxid. It's not just for spraying into pots and sliders. It will actually dissolve oxidized material. This one isn't too bad. I've seen these being really, really dirty. So for the elements, I'm just going to use a little 70% alcohol. Dry it up a bit. Just go over it maybe once or twice. See, it takes a little, little black off, but it's really not the worst thing. A little bit of scratch there. Just clean it up a bit. So I've seen it to where people like to use a little bit of thousand grit, so that's also another option. 
So we'll just do a little bit of a pass just to make sure it's really cleaned up. And that's basically it. It's all you have to do is just remove any dirt, oxidation, things that will interfere with the functionality of the strip. So one thing I like to do is take your velvet and with your favorite uh, mild cleaning solvent, I like you know diluted simple green. Um, soap and water is fine too. Just clean this up, make it nice. It'll come out with a nice sort of thick clean black looking texture as opposed to being kind of dusty looking and whatnot. I just kind of get in here with a bit of a toothbrush just to remove the dust. So after that's wiped in, dab this with a paper towel. See? Pretty grimy. Probably never been cleaned and these were made in 1969. Actually in really good shape. I've seen some of these that are pretty bad. And then you'll probably want to let this air dry or you know you can pat dry it as much as you want, maybe even take a hair dryer to it if you really want to get it back together ASAP. I'll do this to the other side too. So if your comb, your metal comb, has some kind of kinks in it, one thing you can do that, you know, won't be a total, you know solution to this but it'll at least help is if you put it against a hard surface so you can sort of like flip I, I leave this connected but I'll flip my element out of the way and put this on a hard flat smooth surface and you know take something like a small roller or just a you know I have a sanding block here just something to sort of knock these kinks out and get it flat you can either like sort of slap it down or you can sort of run this smoothly. Now make sure nothing gets snagged on these teeth. You just kind of want to try to make this as flat as you can because, you know, you don't want any sort of weird um, behaviors coming out of this being a little bent up. Just do the best you can. Be really careful. And I'm going to just, since I touched this, do one final wipe. So we'll take our comb and our element, get them back together. Now, here's the challenging part. We have to reupholster this whole shebang here and that can get a little tricky because what happens is when you put this down over it with the comb in place and you tack down one side and you stretch this it'll tend to wrinkle the comb this will happen in varying degrees of weirdness and uncertainty what I've done in the past is actually flip this aside, reattach this, and then slide it in before I glue the sides. If you can manage to put this together with the comb already in there, that's good too, but we're going to do it this way today. Now, we figured out that the easiest way to get these nails out is with the flush cutters because you can really get under there, but the heads of these are so fragile and tiny that they just kind of inevitably break. So we're going to reuse the good ones and figure something out for the rest of it. But what you want to do is you want to line up the edge, find your old hole. Don't forget about checking your orientation mark and um, realigning your wear pattern in your velvet if there's any. This is a tiny little craft nail. Just tap that in. 
and we'll get our other one. I was going to use thumbtacks, but this is a pretty dense piece of wood, so it's kind of hard to get something long like that back in. Now what you have to do is stretch the other side, and I'll show you here. You can see how when you just nail it in, it's not completely stretched. There's all that distance to go, so we have to stretch this out, fold it over, and then nail it. So when you have your two sides tacked in and stretched out, now it's time to put your comb, if you want to do it this way, back in. And it's pretty simple. You just have to sort of fold this up, get the edge of your comb in. And I can't stress enough to be very careful with this thing because it bends so easily. Just have to find a way to tuck it in there. Sometimes you might have an edge snag, but you just have to sort of be careful, lift, and shift it in there. Lift and shift. Alrighty, so now the final step here before we reinstall this unit is that we have to glue down the sides of the, the, the felt or velvet once again. Now I'm going to tip you off to my favorite glue, not only for this sort of thing, but for loose Tolex, is this Eileen's Quick Dry Fabric Fusion, which you can find in most you know big box department stores in the uh, sewing section. It's not like the other Eileen's where it's like a white glue. This is clear and dries really, really fast. It's not so fast that you don't have any set time. It's just, it's, it gets tacky right away. So that makes it really easy to do these repairs because once you apply it, you can press down on the Tolex or velvet or whatever and it'll stick right away, which is great. And now with this stuff, you wanna use as little as possible and spread it nice and thin because it works really well and you don't want it to have too much squeeze out, especially up into the, um, where the comb lives. You can even give yourself a little bit of a space between the top edge of the wood and where your glue goes, just to compensate for any squeeze out. out of there and you probably want to start in the middle and smooth it outward all right now it wouldn't hurt to give that a little time to dry because you do want to kind of not stretch this but just sort of flatten it and push this down and get it as tight as you can to make it have the feel of the way it came out of the factory. So what we'll do is repeat that process. Alrighty, so now that we have our element cleaned, our comb cleaned, and our felt cleaned and reinstalled, it's time to put this back in the organ. So what we'll do is we'll take it and make note of our orientation mark here, and we will put it up into the slot where it used to live. And install a couple of screws just to hold it in place. Good tip is to back these out until you feel them drop so you don't cross thread. And then go right in. So you start by doing the top row of screws. And then now we have our two marks here telling us where to put our cable ties. All 
right, we'll tuck these back up in here. All right, so we just needed to screw these last two in, and now we're all remounted. Now all we have to do is put our wires back together. Now we have that photo or hand notated uh, diagram that we made earlier telling us that the orange is on the left and the yellow is on the right. These do kind of just sit where they used to be too, so I'm gonna just widen this hole a little bit. It's usually best to have these bent through a connector and then soldered as opposed to just touching the water back the wire back to the solder. So after we put our last two screws in and uh, soldered up our wires, all we have to do is take these cable ties and just sort of wrap them and tuck them in just to get this wire all secured. Can we kind of pull this so it's nice and taut? There we go. All right, now we close the lid. Our moment of truth. We turn it on. There it is. So all we have to do is uh, get under here and put our two long panel screws back in and that concludes our demonstration on how to repair your pitch slash portamento strip on the Yamaha YC30 organ. Thanks for watching.